One of them is an oversized Android smartphone with a Motorola logo and a pretty competitive price point. Oh, wait, they both are. Both of the phones I'm talking about, they are both that. So which one is right for you? It's a tough question, but we're used to those. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Moto X Pure Edition versus Nexus 6. Motorola took fundamentally different approaches to the big Android phone concept with these two. While the Nexus 6 display is less than a half inch larger and it's only 5 grams more massive, the Nexus 6 feels huge in the hand thanks to its wider construction. The Moto X Pure Edition is by no means a small phone, it's even a millimeter thicker than the Nexus, but in every sense it feels like the more petite device here. It's also much more customizable. There are literally hundreds of configurations available for the Moto X, with custom materials ranging from silicone rubber to wood to leather, and everything from accent color to software greeting to casing engraving, customizable through Motomaker. It's no exaggeration to say that the Moto X Pure Edition is the most customizable Android phone on the market. Meanwhile, the Nexus 6 is available in blue and white. And that's it. Stacking these devices in the hand and taking a look around, it's striking how many design elements Motorola retained. Even to a layman's eyes, it's obvious that these phones are very close cousins, if not outright siblings. But if you could peel away the back cover, which you can't, you'd see the differences start to stack up. From its architecture to the number of cores, the Snapdragon 808 in the Moto X is an entirely different beast than the older 805 in the Nexus. The Moto X also adds a 16 gig option to the 32 and 64 gig tiers that they share, and it packs a nice treat for those in need of even more storage, a SIM tray that doubles as a micro SD card slot. It, once you fill up the Nexus, you need to start moving stuff into the cloud. And speaking of filling up, the Nexus 6 brings a 7% larger battery, and it also offers wireless charging, where the Moto X does not. On the flip side, the Moto X comes with a beefier 25 watt charger in the box. It doesn't let you swap the cable like the older turbocharger, but it does charge the Moto X almost twice as fast, which is super handy if you're often on the go. Which of these displays you like better will depend, as always, on your personal preferences. The IPS display on the Moto X is probably the better screen on the whole, with a slightly higher pixel density, much cleaner whites, and more authentic color reproduction. And it's also the better screen if you spend a lot of time outdoors, because it can get far brighter than the AMOLED panel on the Nexus. If you're more interested in impressing others or yourself with colors that pop, the Nexus 6 is your way to go. That AMOLED panel is an excellent showcase for the Nexus 6's ambient display, which tosses up waiting notifications briefly when the phone is moved or pulled from a pocket. But when we compared the Nexus 6 with last year's Moto X, we said this was a feature better realized on the latter with Motorola's active display, and nothing's changed this year. You don't even need to touch the Moto X to get it to show the time and your waiting notifications. Pick it up, and you can launch the camera just by twisting it twice, or fire up the spotlight by chopping wood. The Moto X will also automatically detect when you're driving, and if you want, it'll read your text messages aloud to you and let you dictate replies entirely hands-free. If you're behind the wheel a lot, that's a big deal. And if you're not, the Moto X can be set to do this when you're at home. It can also silence your ringer automatically when you're in a meeting or asleep. And if you want to use it without touching it, just say its name and it'll be there. Okay, Jarvis. Play Mariah Carey on Spotify. To be fair, you can do that last trick on the Nexus 6 as well, but you can't use a custom key phrase, and you can't do as much with it. Those individual features might not sound like much, but taken together, they make the experience of using the Moto X more personal than the conventional Nexus 6. If you don't care about any of that and decide to run each phone bone stock, well, that's no problem. Each runs the most current version of Android, and Motorola's record of timely updates to the Moto X line is pretty good. Of course, nothing beats a Nexus for update speed, 
but I'd be surprised if there was a truly significant difference here. Motorola has upgraded the camera in the new Moto X to Sony's IMX230 sensor, a big step up from the IMX214 in the Nexus. While there's no optical image stabilization on the Moto X, the new digital stabilization more than makes up for it. And the newer sensor also brings almost double the resolution, as well as phase detection autofocus, which makes for easier macro shots and less wandering focus problems than on the Nexus 6's contrast detection autofocus setup. HDR video recording is also supported on the Moto X, and the flash has been upgraded as well. There's a color-corrected dual LED on the back, and even a flash on the Moto X's selfie cam, which, by the way, is a higher resolution than the Nexus component. By now, you've probably spotted the trend. Pretty much everything is better on the Moto X cameras, and that's mostly borne out by the samples. I'll shut up for a minute so you can see for yourself. Remember when we called out how striking the physical similarities are here? Well, that carries over to general performance as well. You'll find the Pure speakers nearly as loud, if not exactly as loud, as the boomy Nexus 6. Now, our Nexus sample unit is locked to AT&T, while we've primarily tested our Moto X Pure Edition on T-Mobile. But that's no problem. It's called the Pure Edition for a reason. All you need to do is pop in an AT&T SIM, and presto. The Moto X might as well have a Death Star tattoo, too. You don't even have to reboot it. It just registers on the new network like nothing happened. Just keep in mind, if you're buying one of these to work on a specific U.S. carrier, there are differences in which bands are supported, with band 12 a particular sticking point for now. See our full review at Pocket Now, available September 18th for more on this. You'll want to check that review for specific Moto X battery life figures as well, as we've used these phones on separate networks for our test period, and one of them is almost a year old while the other is fresh out of the box, our data is not the most reliable. On the whole, though, the Nexus 6 does better, usually delivering between 4 and 5 hours of screen on time with moderate use. The Moto X, in my testing, has yet to hit the 4-hour mark in screen on time. Your mileage will, of course, vary. As always, choosing between these two phones demands that you consider exactly what you're shopping for. But while the Nexus 6 is still a pretty good buy on the whole, it's tough to recommend it over the Moto X. The newer phone brings better cameras, a brighter display, more useful software, more current hardware, and deeper customization than any other Android. And if you just look at official prices at press time, it's also cheaper than the Nexus 6, while offering microSD expansion to boot. If your needs are very specific and you really need something from the Nexus family, or you really refuse to give up an AMOLED display, you'll probably be plenty happy with the Nexus. If for pretty much everyone else, we recommend heading over to Motomaker and building your Moto X Pure Edition. If you want to see what unboxing your very own Moto X Pure Edition feels like, check out our first impressions video and see what we had to say to viewers' questions about the phone in the latest episode of the Pocket Now Weekly podcast. Stick around for our full review coming September 18th, and most importantly, thanks for watching. <laughs>